So hello and uh, welcome back to the Renford Expert Series. Also welcome all participants in the United States, Canada and as well from other international countries. My name is Manfred Tauber and I am Head of Global Education at Renford. Today I would like to welcome and it's my pleasure Rafael Sandrich from Aventura in Florida, United States. Rafael Sandrich uh, was born in Cali in Colombia. He is currently operating his own dental laboratory in Aventura, Florida, and he specializes in all fixed restorations and custom cosmetics. In eight, uh, 28 years of experience, he has also completed several digital photography courses sought by many experts. In 2012, Rafael Sandrich gave his first course uh, in Spanish for the company Ivoclub Ibadan in USA, also in Florida. And uh, he's now an international uh, uh, key opinion leader and also a lecturer for Ivoclub Ibadan. He's also a graduate of the Press Technology uh, Certification Programs of IPS Emacs and IPS Empress at the Las Vegas Institute. And um, currently, he is honorary member of the Colombian Academy of Ocean Integration. Today, uh, he will talk about the scoop technique. He is the creator of them. And uh, with this webinar, he will present his scoop technique. That means creating concavity in lingual incisal to create translucency. Now look forward to an exciting presentation to learn more about this special technique. And I hand now over to you, Rafael Sandrich. Hello, Manfred. How are Hello. you? Thank you so much for, for the invitation and, and thank you everybody for, for spending time with, 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 with us. So <clears throat> it's time to start, right? Yes, please. Okay, so let's start.
Okay. Okay, guys. This is the this is the guilty this is the guilty picture picture of a scoop. This is the patient that I saw a long time ago, like 12 years ago, because you know she 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 was one of our patients and she came to the practice because she wants to change the the two central and the two central uh, teeth. So, you know, I work I work next to three, three three prosthodontics. So one of them called me and Rafa, let me introduce Mr. Whatever is the name of the person, and she wants to she wants to change this uh, the frontal the frontal teeth. Um, let's take the color. <clears throat> So I was I was super impressed when I, when I see that that kind of a contrast between cervical dentin and, and incisal edge, because because if you if you take a, a a nice a nice observation about it, you can see properly the 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 real opal opal effect the opal effect that you see in the incisal edge is is is, is amazing. So you know they 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 they. You know, I was in shock when when I saw that because you know the the person was 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 super tired with that teeth and they want to change it. So I request the doctor to put an intraoral uh, intraoral mirror because you know I was curious why that opal effect was so 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 hard in that kind of teeth. So when I think when I see inside the mouth and I see the 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 the, the palatal side of the of the centrals, I see that the the patient grinds completely the dentin that the teeth has in, 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 in lingual, and they leave only the buccal part of the tooth. That's why we can see all the translucency through the buccal, because what happened? Uh, the oral concavity is dark, so translucency plus dark, you know, you, you can create some, some kind of translucency. So that's why I get in shock with that picture, and I, I go back to the lab and I say, listen, I, can, I think I can, I can make something I can develop something uh, doing uh, or follow that, 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 that kind of teeth that I just saw it. So of course I go to the lab and I start doing some, some testing. I start doing some, some calibrations so in, the, in the wax, some calibrations, then in the press. And I figured out that I can develop something really nice. So that's why uh, we develop a scoop technique. And so we want to show a little bit what are the best, best five uh, philosophies of a scoop. And then I want to start so, uh, show you guys uh, some course, some cases. And I, wa I, I will show you my first course that I did with a scoop. So let's start, okay? So this is a, a picture that I took with uh, uh, Carlos Ayala. Carlos Ayala is a, is a famous photographer that is, is a dentist too from Peru. Uh, I bring here, I bring him uh, him to the lab to to help me to take a picture of the step of a step of what we are doing, what we are trying to develop, what we are trying to the, to to teach. So he helped me with the pictures of the scoop technique uh, step by step. So what is the advantage of a scoop technique is one of those is incisal position because what happened? Let's say you did a, a diagnostic wax up, right? If you do a diagnostic wax up and then you follow that in your press technique or in your CAD CAM technique, you have the incisal position because what happened? Normally, normally we, we cut back from buccal and we add ceramic, but we know we know that normally the ceramic contracts, so we never get in the same position. We get close, but we never get in the same position. With the scoop, yes. With the scoop, yes, because you do the carving from lingual. You do the carving from lingual. Uh, that's why you, con you have control of the incisal, pos incisal position and you have control of, of, of your shape because you are, you are not modifying the shape. Normally, when we do ceramic, we modify the shape a little bit. Opacity, why? Be because you know, we are preparing the tooth from buccal to lingual. More thick, more thick is the wall, more opacity you have. Translucency, why? Because more thinner is the wall, you have more translucency. 
and value, why value? Because, you know, normally we, we technicians love to use too much enamels, too much opals, too much translucency, and sometimes we change the value. <clears throat> Sometimes we change the value because we can we can control that some, sometimes, and sometimes we think we don't think that the concavity of the mouth is dark. So sometimes we see a nice crown in the model, but when we go to the mouth, everything looks grayish. It's because we use too much translucency, too much enamels. So one of the ways to control the the, the value of the restoration is doing that technique. Okay, so let me show you my first case. <clears throat> So this is the initial situation of the patient. Uh, we decide to, to do a, a bleach, okay? <clears throat> so in that way we pick it up, what kind of uh, ingot we wanna use, and technique and everything. So in that case, we already have the press tooth in the solid model. And you guys can see that we reduce the lingual part like two millimeters inside, okay? And you see, two millimeters. So we create a thin, thin, thin uh, wall. And this is, this is the way, this is an example. The color that, the, in, in the, the image that you see in the left side is, the color that we place from palatal, right? And the color you can see, the imaging you can see in the right side is the, is the translucency or is the color that you, re, you transmit from palatal to buccal. That's why I say, if you want to control opacity, you make that wall a little bit thicker. If you want more translucency, you make it a little bit thinner. So more thicker is the wall, more opacity you have. More thinner is the wall, more translucency you have. Right? So it's a double technique. You can do, you need to do an external glaze, in, in the external stain and glaze technique because you can, you need to finish your crown with the face you like. Crack lines, cervical, you know, more chromatic and cervical or whatever you, you need to do. And then you need to do the internal stain in the concavity of the scoop to create more three-dimensional movements, okay? So that's why we use two techniques and the same in the same shot. The same shot, you, do, you need to do two techniques, the external part of the crown and the internal part of the tooth, that is the scoop, <clears throat> okay? So for the two that I need to mimic, I, I use this, this kind of effects, you know, some cream, some blue, some, uh, some white, and then I bake it and I did all my stratification with Opal, Opal One from Emacs Ceram. Okay. <clears throat> and this is the try-in. This is the try-in. Remember, this is, this is, this is, that was my first case using a scoop technique. Okay. So this is a, a month control. Okay. We did uh, the value the value picture, and this is our final result. Uh, you know, two three months later, you know, it's an it's a you guys need to understand that it's a ninety percent monolithic crown. We did only five percent or six percent of of a, a stratification. So it's really important to pick the right pick the right ingot and do then. Uh, you you know your nice wax up your nice texture your nice your nice uh, technique. So Ivo Clark helped me to uh, uh, to 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 publish that that article in 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 Germany. That was like uh, eleven years ago. So <clears throat> so we did uh, that article, and this is a, a a nice case that we did using two kind of technologies. We did a CAD CAM technology using two different materials. Because I think it's important to 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 understand what happened with each material, so we use Empress and we use Emacs CAD, and we did the same. We did the same. We did the you see the internal stain from inside the concavity. We did the external stain. You know, follow some some characteristics of, of the of the restoration, 
And then once the glaze is finished, we need to follow, for example, if you put in the concavity, blue in the distal and mesial, a little bit of uh, chroma in the mamelons in the middle of the tooth, the idea is try to follow the same color with the ceramic. So if, we, if I put blue stain in distal and mesial, I need to put a uh, blue enamel in distal and mesial. If I put a little bit of mamelon light in, uh, if I put a little bit of cream in the mamelon area, I need to put a little bit of mamelon light. Okay, okay. Uh, we can create some translucency we clear, and then we cover everything with enamels. So we, we need to do the same build that what we do from buccal, but from palatal, okay? This is step by step what we do. That's the result of the two restorations. Okay. So this is step by step. You can see how much translucency we can create from palatal. And remember, we need to finish first buccal side. And then we need to start uh, the buildup. <clears throat> cover everything with enamel. And here is the translucency of the restoration. Here is the case done. And we can see here how the materials works different. For example, we pick the same color, but we, we, we can see that the Empress Crown has more luminosity in the incisal edges than the Emax ones. So it's really important to understand what, what, what is the, the ideal material that we need to use, okay? This is another case that we are doing some different crowns, different veneers with different uh, stump shades and stump shades uh, colors. <clears throat> so this is our our uh, our patient with the preparation. So in that case, for example, we wax normally we wax everything. We we use the geo the geo wax a lot. We wax hundred percent everything in 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 wax and then press. I consider that for, for posterior teeth, uh, we can find a lot of a uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, material that that give you give give us enough strength, enough enough uh, aesthetics in the posteriors, and I think monolithic is 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 you know is the future in the in the posterior restorations. So we use Emax Press for uh, most of the of, of our big cases. So, and then we do a stain and glazing posteriors and, and you can see here in the anteriors, everything is already glazed in the concavity. You see blue in the distal and mesial and some chroma in the middle of the tooth. <clears throat> this is the case uh, finished in the, in the solid model. And this is our trying, okay? And this is the case uh, like six months later, you can see, you can see the, all the effects you see in the incisal edge are from palatal and from palatal. But the, the beauty of this case is we, we have a lot of, you know, we have some vitality in the, in the incisal edge and we have the value control, you know, you can see that this is a, like a one in one BL4 color and still we have a nice value control, but we have some vitality in the incisal edge that is the idea of a scoop, you know, create some three dimensional movement in, the, in that part of the, of the restoration. You can see here too the, the nice integration in the soft tissue that is really important too. <clears throat> okay. You can see the vitality of the of the restorations. And you know, this we published we published that case here in America. And then Ivo Clark did the 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 all the global information about change from uh, ingots values to MT. Remember, we have before value value ingots that are value one, value two, value three, and opal one, value two, opal one, opal two, and then we change everything to a, a medium translucency ingot. So they use my case to do the global uh, campaign promoting this case, uh, this material. This is another case that we did with some uh, friends in, in Venezuela where we, you know, we have a big, big composing between the teeth and then uh, <clears throat> they remove the composing and we find out the, the biggest space between centrals. 
and you know they did they he did he his nice preparation going going back going back to you know maybe at the same level a little bit back a little bit back from the papilla because is is the only way that you guys cover the the connection between restoration and and, and, and teeth so he did a great job then he he gives me the 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 stump shade uh, information that is really important when we use a, a translucent materials then they did the the wax up in in Venezuela, and from there we did the the, the mock up. Okay, <clears throat> we did the mock up, and then we press everything. We wax press, and then we start finishing our our crowns. You see, we, we I did the build up with different ceramics, different colors to create a three D three D effect in the inside of ledge. And this is the case finished in the in our in our solid model. You can see the the the, the movement, the colors in the incisal part. This is a weak control. This is a eight months control. You can see the, the movement in the teeth, the individualization between uh, each uh, restoration. We always are focusing in our, you know, nice gingival contours, nice, nice incisal embrasures and you know, try to make everything more more natural, not like piano keys or, or something in one color. That is really, really, you know, in, in this market in America, everybody wants white colors. <clears throat> so this is our final, our final case. And this is the article we did. This is an, uh, something a little bit more extreme, you know, this is a young girl that, you know, break his, his front teeth doing a uh, skateboard. And, you know, was super, super hard uh, treatment because she tried like seven, six times, five times to do a bone graft and all, all the stuff. And, and at the end, everything, you know, at the end, finally the, the bone graft uh, healed. Um, uh, the, the surgeon sent me the, the case and told me, Rafael, I need to place uh, ideally three teeth in the space that I have. So from there, he started his, his surgery and then uh, implants heal. They put the prosto guy put some snap on restoration until the implants get healed properly. So when the patient was ready to take the impression, uh, <clears throat> We did an a, a indirect uh, impression to to get copy exact copy of the uh, of of the temporaries to mimic all the restoration to that. So these cases are special. That, like I say before, you know, I normally I work with three prosthodontics next to me. So the big cases and the important cases, normally I'm I'm available to start the case in the morning and finish the case in the afternoon, no matter what. So. So this is our trying, you know, everything is, you know, before we, we normally use press technology. So we wax everything before press. This is our case the, in the moment that patient came, we start doing the trying, you know, shaping the teeth, uh, organizing occlusion, uh, pushing a little bit of soft tissue. We have too much pressure. We start uh, removing pressure little by little. Now we know that we don't we don't have papilla in that in that in that uh, space. So we took the color of the of the of the gum. Then we go to the lab, and you can see now you can see now the translucencies that we start creating the incisal ledges, you know, little by little. Then we go to the lab and we finish our case. We did a three unit bridge, Emax bridge, and, and one single veneer. This is the case in the mouth uh, two months later. You see, it's still the soft tissue, you know, needs some work, needs some, some regeneration, but you know, I think the result is something, you know, acceptable from, so from, from we start to now, I think it's something really acceptable. <clears throat> But you see, you see the vitality of the incisal edges. It's, it's not ceramic, you know. It's it's not buccal builder. It's it's something that we create from the palatal of the of the of the tooth. So we can create shape. We can create value. 
we can control the value. You know, value is really, really important. It's more when you try to, to use A1, B1 colors that, you know, you put too much clear or whatever enamel in, 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 in the amount that is not properly, you, you will get a low value restorations, okay? So this is the close up of the restoration. This is a nice case. This is a nice case because it's a complex case. This is a friend of mine that she had for so many years uh, gold onlays and inlays in the posterior area. And you know, gold is amazing material for restoration, but you know what? A grind, you know, with the time, everything get down, get down and get lost. You know, you lost all your gold, you lost everything. And at the same time, you guys are, you know, everywhere is closing vertical dimension. So what is the, the protocol here? Or what is the treatment here? The treatment here is remove the gold restorations and try to compensate a little bit the curve of speed. So we start doing something in the, in the posteriors, in the lower posteriors. So we did the, the, the eggshell, eggshell design to create the, 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 the posterior crowns. We did the design. Then we did the preparations with the, the preparations and take the, the, the intraoral impression with the scanner, with the iterative scanner. And at the same time, we the we develop we develop with the same file we develop the eggshell for the upper part. But the idea the idea was uh, the, uh, deliver first the lower the lower uh, crowns to the lower crowns to 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 organize the curve of the speed. Okay, and was that was the the our protocol deliver first the the lower crowns we did a zirconia crowns stain and glaze that I, like I said before is I think is enough material to 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 make a nice and 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 and, and good restorations and then once we cement the lower crowns we go to the upper arch and start. You uh, develop our 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 final restoration. We place our PMMA. Then the doctor reprep and take the intraoral impression with the iterative scanner. <clears throat> you see, everything works for the same design. Now it's time to 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 jump from PMMA to to ceramic. So. We talked with the patient and the patient, you know, did some small changes. So we did the small changes. And we, in that case, we, we mill the, the wax, then we press. You see, we create a concavity. We create our uh, buccal anatomy. <clears throat> this is the day of the train. This is a, a month of, of, of follow-up, three months of follow-up, six months of follow-up, one year of follow-up. But you see, everything is using the, the same technique, the same concept. Do the, the wax, press, and then fill the spaces with the lingual spaces with some stain and then some ceramic. <clears throat> okay, did we, this, this is the publication we did twice with Lapline. This is, you see, you can see this amazing restoration that we received, you know, everything oh, super, super, uh, this adap the adaptation was, the fit was super bad, the adaptation was super bad, the, the gums are, you know, in bad shape. So doctor remove everything, put new temporaries and then send everything to me. You know, he sent me all the picture with the color, <clears throat> you know, we wax, we press, and we start doing the same. You see, filling the, the concavity. You see, you can see the translucency that we can create from, from, from palatal. You know, it's really, it's really important that you guys work with a nice, nice wax because more, some waxes are more, more crystallized than the other ones. You know, I find out that the G1 is really soft, really, really nice. So we can, we can take the carver and go from the palatal side and you can leave a nice, nice surface. And then when you press, it's really, it's really, really, the material is really easy to, to, 
to to organize and follow the the you know they 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 have a good copy of anatomy and everything it's really really nice so you can see the translucency this is really important it's really important that you calibrate your wax before you press because then it's really it's really it's dangerous going to any instrument to try to calibrate because you know the material is emax is really hard in that stage so so it's really important to calibrate the wax before before you guys uh, the press <clears throat> so this is the the case six months later we can see here the texture all the anatomy you know it's, it's, it's something soft it's something that break the incisal edge and, and make everything non monolithic it's, it's like a create the 3d effect okay this is the the cage we can see the integration in the soft tissue and big cases we can we can do the same you know for the implant cases we can do we can do the same we can do let me check my my timer because i need to see how we are <clears throat> This is something really, really important. You know, we, we can apply the technique in different ways. So this is the way that we received this patient. He did the impression directly to the implant. And, you know, we normally do for this kind of cases, we do, we do, a, we, we do a prototype. We do a prototype because we want to know where we need to go, where we go, okay? So, in that prototype, we can show the patient, we can show the doctor that we need to use some components that bring the angulation a little bit lingual, like a multi-unit. So we go back to the lab, we change the plan, we use some multi-units, and now we can see in the software that we can uh, have uh, all our, our screw holes in a little bit palatal. So in that way, we can make a new prototype. We can make a new prototype, send it to the try-in, and once everything is fine, once the patient approves everything, we go to the CAD CAM again, and we mill the zirconia frame, and we do cuspid to cuspid, uh, premolar to premolar, uh, single Emacs crowns. Okay, so we have the frame, we have the wax, then we have the the we have the zirconia frame done. This is spread out. Then we need to, we start doing the, our wax, our, our uh, pink, pink ceramic buildup. You know, little by little, then we press our Emacs crowns. And now we have everything done buccally. You see, we have our contours, our color. When, when we are happy with the colors, and of course, we already have some internal characteristic in the in the scoop uh, area, uh, and you can see the translucency we can create with the calibration of the wax. Now we are focusing more in that, and now we already fill all the spaces with different ceramic. We glue, we glue in that in that time we glue the crowns directly to the zirconia, and we use that. Uh, glycerin liquid around the, the margins to avoid some discoloration of the cement later on. <clears throat> so you can see the vitality of the, of the restorations with the scoop technique. You can see some movements, you can see some translucency, some crack lines, some different colors in the incisal part. And this is the case in the mouth. Using 95% monolithic crown and a little bit of a ceramic in the incisal lingual incisal portion. Okay, but the, 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 the important tip here is you need to use the same colors with ceramic that you use in stains. So you can create movement. Okay, this is another view of the picture. <clears throat> this is the, the restoration, some different movement, different positions. Teeth looks individual. Okay, but let's say let's say that that um, you know make a big case is is kind of not easy, but it's it's, it's really hard. It's is less harder than make a single crown. So this is a, a tooth that you know have a root reabsorption. 
and doctor place the implant, then doctor place, uh, try to take the impression and try to take the color. But you know, for me, that, that, that part of the color is wrong because the, he already manipulated the tooth. So he already manipulated the mouth. So for me, that, that, that color is wrong because the teeth at this point is dry. So I tried to explain to the doctor, but you know, anyway, we make the crown, we try to match with the color he, he sent to us. Of course, we follow all the, all, the, all the protocols to follow and to capture whatever we need to do to give him whatever he needs to do. So this is the, all the great job he did with his temporary. And this is our, our crown over our uh, uh, zirconia abutment. You see some different colors in the uh, scoop portion. Then we follow all the things with our enamels. And this is the trying of the crown. You see, it's a little bit light. So yeah, in that way we confirm that the picture he took was, was wrong because, you know, sometimes the colors get down in color and when in chroma half shape or one shape. So we need to, we need to be careful with that when we take colors. <clears throat> so this is our final crown later on. So, and you see, you know, the gum level is a little bit high, but you know, you can see if you pick a right, the right angle, if you do a nice technique of the stratification, you can get really, really, really close to the natural teeth. Okay. <clears throat> this is another central. He did all his job, really nice job. You know, give me the information of his, his soft tissue. Uh, we did a try-in, the same problem. We did a try-in, everything was a little bit light because, you know, I think the, 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 the technique of take the color is, is really, really sensitive. And then we modified the tooth and this is the day of the delivery. We can see the integration of our single crown in the, in the mouth, you know, different angles. You can see all the incisal movement, all the incisal colors are there, you know? It's, it's something that is, 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 it's something that we need to learn how we pick the right ingot to be and stay close to the uh, single restoration. Like I said before, make six veneers or eight veneers is kind of easy, but when you need to match one tooth and don't, don't do the buildup in the way we normally do using 13, 14 powders is really hard, but we can do it. We can do it if we have a good eye. We, if we train the, the eye, we can get a nice results. <clears throat> this is another nice case, you know, reabsorption. This is from my friend from Juan Delgado from Mexico. You know, he did a nice, nice job in the, in the surgery with his uh, surgeon. You know, clean, clean, clean protocols, clean, clean procedures. Uh, he placed the implants. Uh, he put the bone graft. Then he used his own teeth like a temporary that is the best temporary ever. Then he, you know, he did the retrofit over his, uh, his uh, abandonment. And then they let, they let everything heal. And um, look that, him take the picture, take the picture before he removed the, the temporary. So this is the right moment to take the color. No once you remove the temporary, because once you remove the, you remove the temporary, patient has at least five, 10 minutes with his mouth open and uh, the teeth get dry. So you need to do it in that moment. So what happened now? Now we have the polarized picture. He sent me all the information because you know we are working from distance. We're working from uh, Mexico to Miami. So he does, the indirect technique to capture the soft tissue emergence profile. When he captured the profile, he goes to the mouth, plays the impression copying, and then he took the impression. He sent me everything to me. You know, this is the, the original model. This is model number one. You see, you can see the geo wax here in, the, in, our, in, our, in our model. I do, I do normally two models. One is for delivery the crown and second is for do our daily job because you know, 
we do dirty job in the lab, we do shaping, we do scarving, we do whatever we need to do, okay? Then we press, you see, we, we can do our, our uh, nice anatomy, our nice uh, contours, following the, 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 the tooth that we need to copy. <clears throat> now we have the press, we have the feeding, you see, we can do lay little by little, little by little. We do, you know, at this point was 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 long time ago that I did this case. So at that point we are doing little by little, you know, with nice instrument like a lentil shape, little by little. I, I, I've been doing my my concavity calibration, doing the calibration, doing the calibration until I get the point that uh, that I like. <clears throat> this is our our stain technique. So we con we control with a with our polarized uh, camera from a smile line. We calibrate the polarized effects that, that they give me in the in the in his picture, and then we start using some coloring. You know, the, 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 this this tooth has a special characteristic from palatal, so we use uh, we use the the material that is from Sasha Hine, that you you mix the liquid with the ceramic, and you can see. It the real color uh, in the ceramic. So we use that technique too, and you can see here in the in the inside salage of the of the of the central, you can see the yellow the, the yellow the yellow the yellow color. <clears throat> and then this is the crown glazed. And of course I sent two crowns to him to Mexico because you know we are in distance so I made two crowns and I sent two two crowns to him. He did the cementation, and this is the crown in the mouth. Okay, this is the scoop technique crown in the mouth. This is the polarized picture. This is our our one year control crown. Okay, so you know, little by little, we are start developing the technique, doing nice cases, and showing showing our industry that the technique works because you know. Uh, sometimes you create, you create. People doesn't believe that different techniques works like something that we are been doing for so, so many years. So this is a really, really, really important case that is a is a is the wife of one one dentist that I worked with me for several years, and she tried to maintain. He tried to maintain her teeth in the mouth for years and years, doing composite here, composite there. But you know what? The tooth has a big uh, reabsorption, some big, big lesions. So uh, he decided to place an implant. <clears throat> to place an implant. So uh, this is the, the day that I meet her in the second stage. Okay. Uh, this is not the right time to, pay, to, pay, to pick the color because, because the, the mouth is already exposed. Uh, opening the soft tissue, so it's not the right place to, it's not the right moment to take the color. So in that case, we use a uh, Emacs cut abandonment, Emacs cut abandonment, and 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 you know, it's a nice nice technique because everything fits 100% between each, you know, by in tie base with the block fit perfectly. <clears throat> so we use the the scan body to. To tell the the software that what kind of a, a, a implant we are using, we we mill the abandonment, then we go back to the patient. This is the day that we need to take the color because everything is fresh and is stable. Then we remove the temporary. We try, you know, this is a academic picture. You know, this is not the this is not the right shape of the uh, abandonment. This is only for for a teaching purpose to show the picture how how looks the the block before uh, crystallization. Okay, uh, this is the abandonment already crystallized. <clears throat> uh, we cement the the abandonment over the T, T base using multi-link implant uh, cement. Then we use our our famous wax. You know, we we normally we like to use the the wax that is for margin, the your the red one, the your the the red one, to cover our base of the tooth. 
you know, the first layer of the, of the wax, we use the geo red, okay? And on top, you know, for us, it's more, it's more like a more flexible, and then we use the gray one. We use the gray one to, to, to do the final contour, okay? And we seal the margin with the red one too. Then we press, you know, with the fit is really, really, really good. Uh, so we can see the emergence profile of the abandonment. We can see about the, the feet of the crown. We can see the, all the characteristics that we place from palatal of the tooth. We can see the, the buccal, you can see guys there, the buccal, the buccal characteristics, the crack lines, the, all the effects that we need to match the, the tooth because the tooth is really, really, really hard. We can see the emergence profile too. And we can see here all the, the, the crown is already done. The crown here is already done. Here in our in, a, in our model. Here is the tooth that we need to that we need to to match. Right? This is the development in place. And this is our final crown. Okay? So this is something that you need to pick the right ingot. The right ingot. No, no, because it's anterior, anterior case, everybody use HT because everybody assume that HT means translucency and it's aesthetic. No, it's, 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 for me, it's the opposite. You know, HT is a block that I use only for onlays because they need to absorb the concavity of the tooth. Uh, I use different materials to do my aesthetic cases. I, I never use HT for you for, for to make my interior cases. I use LT, I use MT, I use multi. Multi is an amazing block. But you know, it's, it's, it's a sensitive technique. Like when we build ceramic, you know, I built ceramic for 15 years. That's why I'm, I have my, my good, my eye training in color and in, in, in what, what I need to use, what I, I don't need to use. So check. You know, this is a difficult case that I did with a crown that is 95% monolithic crown. And I did my, all my movement with different colors and different ceramics, but you know, it's, the, it's, it's, it's a ingot selection. Ingot selection is really, really, really important. So you can see another view of the, of the crown. You know, it's, it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it's a difficult case. It's a tough, tough case. I can guarantee that if we build this crown, we need to do, do it like two or three times to, to, to get close to the uh, original color. <clears throat> so guys, this is my, my engine. This is my engine. This is my family. This is, this is something that I, that I respect. I respect that I love because it's the people that I always miss when I travel, when I always are out of the home teaching. So I respect them a lot because, you know, they are, they are always with his arms open to receive me when I come back to all, all, all of my training or whatever I do for work. So this is my, my family. This is everybody. This is, you know, we are, we are five. We have three teenagers. So we, are, we have a, a busy, busy, busy life. Because, you know, I show this, people, this picture because sometimes people believe but we have different life that everybody and we have the same life plus our travels plus our lectures right manfred <laughs> so it's it's a you know we we have a busy busy life but you know we enjoy it we we enjoy to share with everybody what we do that you know we try to do something good so i need to thank everybody to to join us tonight, and I want to leave uh, our my my presentation with a nice video that we make with the picture with Carlos Ayala. You can see there is some geo wax too. So, Manfred, thank you for the opportunity, and we keep in touch. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it was very interesting.
Thank you, Manfred. So thank you. Um, again, uh, very interesting to, to see and learn about your scoop technique and uh, I believe in this technique, it's, I think it's very helpful. This mixing with press technique and then this, this uh, characterization from palatal, I think is very helpful for many dental technicians to make their life a little bit easier and to, to achieve very nice natural results with all this translucency and that the colors come from the back. This is important. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for your very nice presentation and your excellent pictures. It was uh, again a pleasure for me. And I hope that we will see us soon, hopefully perhaps next year, we will see when we can travel and we keep in contact and all the best for you and for your family. <laughs> the same, Alfred. Take care, man. Thank okay. Bye-bye. So Bye-bye. Bye-bye.